back in the day when we got beaten, who are you going to call? <laughs> you couldn't even go to your dad and say, Dad, I'd like to talk to Mum about this whole beating thing. I think it's unacceptable. <laughs> because they were always in agreement. You know, like today we might go, oh, a bit soft. Oh, why'd you shout at him? Oh, it's a bit much. No, our parents were in agreement. I think comedy chose me. I think it was a situation whereby you can't just make people laugh and it not be something that you love. And the minute I could decided that, you know what, I really want to do this full time. I went to a club and, you know, did some stand up and I went onto the circuit. But this was after years of performance and, and acting and doing different plays and writing plays, you know, young plays and young kind of like um, second wave production, um, Orban Empire. As a young artist, we would just kind of join the group. So after doing all of that, confidence was built. So when I was asked to do a, a probably fashion show back in the day and all of that, and they paid me. I mean, first of all, they pay you curry goat rice. And you're like, wow, this is really great, you know what I mean? And then the minute it turns into money, you start thinking, well, times that you start doing the maths. So if I do this every night, that means I could be making this a week. That means I could be making this a month. Actually, that's my wage. That's my career, and that's how I realized, actually, I could make this a profession. I could build on it, and it's, it was great money. I just want a moment of silence for those who got beaten. That wasn't beaten, that was abuse. <laughs> Imagine they sent you for the belt. <laughs> so you got to go, okay, you want to beat me? I'll get the belt. <laughs> this looks like a great grade of leather. <laughs> I think that will hurt me, go ahead. <laughs> and then they will beat you, you know, they'll come from nowhere and just beat you. <laughs> My mum could just be getting off the, the praying. Bless in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Angela? And I'm like, you're just talking to Jesus. Remember them crying that you used to cry? When you used to be in the mirror going, <laughs> <laughs> You can see the welt on your skin. And then you go back to the mirror and go. <laughs> and your parents never ever came upstairs to go, are you all right? They didn't care. And I know there are a lot of people who have complexes now about the beating. I know that some people may have been counseling about the beating <laughs> because you couldn't understand. That was the beating with love. I lick you because I love you. Coming back into church and having to perform again into not just a crowd, but church people. I mean, church people that I grew up with, who will sit there and go, hallelujah. Where, they, where, where am I going to sit there and say, guess what? So you're walking down the street. I couldn't put the two together. So when Marcia Dixon said to me, Angie, could you come in and do stand up in the church? It's on her heart to, to do this. And I went, you're joking. Church people, church people. Now I've been a Christian about a year and a half then baptized. So I was in the church, but I wasn't being Angie Lamar in the church. I was just being a churchgoer and then getting on with my work. I couldn't work out how you marry the two. You know, people say, what is your ministry and what do you do? I never thought I'd say, oh, my ministry is stand-up comic. Any, any elders out there want to bounce a few jokes, come to me. <laughs> I never thought that that wasn't my ministry. So when she said to do it in the church, I said, okay, God, you really think the church can take it? So I said to her, yes. And I said to her the other day that when you asked me about doing this in the church, Marcia, I was thinking, why don't this woman go away? You know what I mean? Because I don't want to do stand-up in the church, really. And then it, all of a sudden, I just felt this rush of excitement, like, of course I could. And I remember I ain't done stand-up for years. 
So not only am I coming back, I'm coming back to the church. So I don't know if the church audience know me. Do they want to? Angela Ma, Christian, is she trying to use the church? All those things started to play on me. And I said, God, you know, if it's, if it's gonna be successful, if I'm supposed to do it in the church, make it so plain. When I say plain, God, I mean absolute plain. I'm talking overflow. I'm talking sellout. I'm talking no more tickets. I've got four older brothers, four older brothers. And people always see me with three brothers. They say, but Andrew, you got three brothers. How come you got four? It's always three in the picture. I don't know, this, is a, this child is my dad's child. It's an outside child. <laughs> Black people are wicked. <laughs> Whose child is that? Oh, that's the outside child. <laughs> what do you mean? The child that we leave outside, what? The child is outside, not of us, not from this family. The child is outside. So on the day, I was like, OK, God, it's in the church, you know? Because even Master said to me, Angie, I hope you know where the line is. You know, it's church. I said, Master, I know where the line is. I know where the line is. I'm a church chick. I do know where the line is. So she comes into the um, changing room, and she looks at me. And she, uh, it's like a, a wig is twisted. I mean, she looks a lot. I'm like, Master, you look so relaxed earlier. Why are you looking so flustered? How's it going? She goes, I had to give tickets back, to give money back to people. We had to put standing chairs out there. We had to put this out there. We, uh, we've had to send people back. People upstairs can't get no chairs. It's packed and it's overflow. And I thought, OK, I hate you. I mean, Queen of Gospel, Queen of Comedy, it was like, this is going to be together. And we're doing a Queen of God tour. You know what I mean? We're going to come together in the future to do a, a show together. But Lorraine Kate and I come from the ch same church assembly. So she's Church of God in Christ, but she was Northumberland Park and I was Brooklyn. No matter what you're going through, sometimes you don't know what to do. He can do it. My God can do it. So growing up together, we were almost in the same presence, but not knowing. I knew her sisters, I knew the whole Cater family, and growing up she knew my brother, and you know, my brother, he used to manage the, um, the gospel group Paradise. So when we were growing up, we were in each other's world. One day, I was at an event and um, a Dare to Dream event talking, and she was in the toilet with her two uh, two kids. And she went, Angie, and I went, hi. And we started talking about family, kids, and we connected there. And then years later, when um, Marcy said, Living Cater to warm up, I thought, of course, because that girl can sing. We were in the 
changing room, cracking jokes, actually remembering moments in our lives that were parallel. Being at convention, being at the same convention at the same time when we were kids. Powerful. Love that girl. My career in comedy was put on hold because I nearly died. The first time I took a break, I had my daughter and I had fluid on the brain. So the water was crushing my brain. And so for about a year and a half, I was out of the game. And I lost the vision on my right side and I had lumbar punches like every other week just to get the fluid off my brain. And it was at that point where I realized, oh my God, this. Maybe this is it. And I remember praying, saying to God, please don't let me lose my comedy timing. Please don't let my brain be slow, because when you're doing comedy, you've got to be so quick. You've got to be there with it. And I kept saying, don't let me use my timing. Don't let me lose my timing. If, if this is it, take me. If it's not, give me another shot. I really want to do this. And that, to me, was the turning point. That's the turning point. You saw Lorraine, give it up for Lorraine Cato. Woo! I said to Lorraine, I was gonna sing, but I said, let her sing, let her sing. When she's like, dear in my eye, oh, eh, oh. I said, you couldn't do that in church back in the day. That's not how the songs used to go back in the day. It was like this. Draw me near. Near a blessed rock. And you're thinking, will you hurry up? Especially when they got to go verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Draw her nearer, nearer in her gold shoes. Hallelujah. Go on with yourself. But those songs never leave you, do they? They never leave you. When you're going through a hard times and your friends let you down, what song do you turn to? What a friend we have in Jesus. Bella Simpson. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, what a privilege. Carry. Sing to. All right, stop it. It's not convention. To be away from the business and feel that feeling of, um, Disappointment. I suppose the biggest disappointment for me at the time was a lot of people didn't know I was away. And I think for a year, um, it just felt like no one was calling or no one noticed me. So you could disappear from a situation and no one's actually seen you, heard from you, or a few friends did. There was one friend in particular, Brenda Menes. It was that kind of waking up to realizing that you could pop it, disappear, and no one would really know it's only when you come back and you explain, people will say, oh, I didn't, I noticed that you were. So it wasn't that they were deliberately not going, oh, she's away and I don't care. They were just getting on with their lives. Now, I remember when I was growing up, it was just me and my brother Larry growing up. Just the two of us. All of a sudden, my mum says, 
You have two more brothers. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, two more brothers, what? Well, yes, we have two in Jamaica. <laughs> and we send for them and they're coming to live with us. <laughs> you look like you're an outside child. <laughs> I, uh, How do I want to be remembered in the legacy of comedy? I said to my kids, when my funeral is up, just put outside, sold out, you know? Because it must be packed. If my funeral is in jam, <laughs> I don't know how I want to be remembered. I just want to, I want to people to go, you, she did good work. And she made us laugh, she made us think, she made us change, she made us, she just, she did something and she went down in history as somebody who, I, I, you know, I fight for people and um, I like to encourage people. So who knows, I'm not writing that one because that one isn't for me to write. Did your parents send for you? <laughs> Anybody who was sent for, put your hand up. One sent for up there, one sent for up there, another sent for, you sent for, oh, sorry for no, sorry for no. <laughs> Just trying to blend in and fit in as one, not outside, not send for. So now, me and my brother used to have our own bedrooms, separate rooms, and we were a black family, you know, separate rooms. We were like a white family, separate rooms. And then we had to now move in together because these children let them send for. So now we go to the airport to get these send for picnic. I like to know that I've done something that is worthy and somebody can say to me, you told me that I could and I did and I have. That's enough for me. And that I raise my children to, to know God. Mm -hmm.